All right, let's get stuck into question 11. So I'll show you these ones manually and with the calculator, because I know a lot of you guys have these FX100 AUs or whatever other ones can do complex numbers. Um, so part one, so we're looking for two plus three i times one minus i. We've got two times one, uh, two times negative i, the three i times one, and 3i times negative i. Now the, the i's multiplied together make negative 1, and then the negatives cancel, because we've got, also got the negative there, so that makes plus 3. And then that's 5 plus i. So let's check that out on the calculator as well. Uh, I've already got it in complex mode, as you can see there, but if your calculator isn't, you can put it into complex mode by hitting mode and then 2. And then we want 2 plus 3i. The i button is right there, there's a little purple i there. And then that times 1 minus i. Which is 5 plus i. Okay, let's go on to part 2. So that's the complex conjugate of z, which is just like replacing i with minus i. So that, when we take co conjugate, becomes 2 minus 3i. You can also do that on the calculator, though it's not really worth it because it takes longer to punch in. But um, if you hit shift and then there's a little button here that says complex, and then conjugate, and you can do 2 plus 3i. But of course much fa faster just to work out, just to replace that plus with a minus. Uh, okay, so we've got that minus 2 on w. And the way that you would work that out manually is you'd multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of 1 minus i, which is 1 plus i. Because that's going to give us a real number on the denominator. It's a bit like uh, rationalizing the, the denominator. You want to multiply it by something that's, that's going to give you a nicer denominator. So on the top we've got 2 times 1 plus i, and then on the bottom you end up with 1 plus 1, if you expand that. And then that makes 2, which cancels with that 2. So it's 2 minus 3i minus those. But 2 minus the 1 is 1, and minus 3i minus the i is negative 4i. So let's see that on the calculator as well. It's 2 on 1 minus 4i. 1 minus 4i. Part B. All right, if it has a 0 at r and a double 0 at 4, that means that p of x can be written as x minus r, that gives us the 0 r, and times x minus 4 squared, that gives us the double 0. So let's just expand that and see what that makes. I'm going to expand that bit first. Make x squared minus 8x plus 16. And then we've got x cubed, negative uh, 8x squared, and 16x minus uh, x squared. Those negatives cancel there, you get plus 8rx and minus 16r. And we want that to be equal to this, which is x cubed plus ax squared plus b. So what I might do is collect um, like these x squared ones together and, and the x's together as well. So we get x cubed and we'll have x squared times minus 8 and minus r and then x times 16 and 8r. Okay, well now we can see that this has to be zero because there's no x term in here and this one has to be equal to a and this one is b so that being zero that will tell us that r has to be negative two and then if you plug that into here so we've got a equals negative 8 minus r, which is negative 8 
plus 2, if r is negative 2, and that makes negative 6. And we've got that b is negative 16r, and if r is negative 2, then that makes 32. So we've got r is negative 2, a is negative 6, and b is 32. Part C. So I made another video a while ago about partial fractions, so I'll put a link to that up there if you want to see more examples. So with this one, we want this to equal that, so I'm just going to multiply both sides of, of that equation by the denominator there to clean everything up. So you will get on the left, you get x squared minus x minus 6, and then on the right, so we've got that times all of that. So when you do that bit times that, that's going to cancel with that, and you're going to get just a times that. And then you've got that times that. Now, what I might do here is use, um, so I mentioned like two methods in my previous videos. One is where like you try different values of x to solve it, and the other one is where you collect um, all the, you know, the coefficients of x squared and so on. I might actually use like a combination of those two because what I want to do is set x to be negative 1 to like get rid of that bit. That's going to make things really nice and simple. But I don't really want to set x to be root 3 to get rid of that one because then there's going to be square roots everywhere and it's going to be annoying. So let's just start off by doing that. So on the left you'll get 1 minus negative 1 minus 6, which is negative 4. And then on the right, we've got negative 1 squared minus 1, which is um, positive 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And then this bit is just 0, because that bit's 0, which is why I wanted to set it like that. So that gives us a equals 2 very easily. Now what I might do is put that back in and then do the thing with the coefficients. So we've got x squared minus x minus 6 equals... 2x squared minus 3 plus, um, let's expand that, so we've got bx squared plus bx plus cx plus c. And then let's collect things together, so you've got like a 2x squared there and a bx squared there, so that makes 2 plus b times x squared. And then we've got a bx and a cx, so let's call that b plus c times x, and then you've got a negative 6 and plus c, so c minus 6. So we know because this is equal to this, we know that this bit has to be 1, because uh, that's the coefficient here. This bit has to be negative 1, because that's the coefficient on the x, and this bit has to be equal to negative 6. So that one's really easy. If uh, if c minus 6 equals negative 6, then c equals 0. And then we've also got uh, 2 plus b equals 1, so b is negative 1. And just to check that, let's plug those in there and make sure that that works. So yeah, it does. So now that we've got those values, we can do this integral. So we just want to replace this with this expression with the values that we just found. So we've got 2 on x plus 1 plus um, b was negative 1, so we've got negative x, and c is 0, so that just disappears. Okay, and now these we can integrate quite easily. So this is 2 ln of x plus 1, and then this one, you can think of that as being negative half um, 2x, over x squared minus 3, so that the numerator is the derivative of the denominator, and then that allows you to say that it's negative half ln of x squared minus 3, plus a constant. And that's it. Part D. Okay, to find w, which is that uh, vector on the graph, it's just u rotated by 90 degrees, which, if we're doing complex numbers, is just 
you multiply by i. So you can say it's u times i, which is going to make 5i minus 2. And then to find v, well, v is just the u vector plus the w vector. So like that's w. If you add w on there, you're going to get v. So u plus w, that one plus that one is going to make 3 plus 7i. And then part 3, so w on v, let's work out what that is. 5i minus 2 on 3 plus 7i. Uh, you can just do that on the calculator. I'll also go through how to do it manually. So we multiply by the complex conjugate of that, 3 minus 7i. And on the top, that's going to give us um, 15i. And we've got 5i times negative 7i. I's multiply together make negative 1, and then that cancels with that negative, so we just get plus 35. And then we have negative 2 times 3, and negative 2 times negative 7i, which is plus 14i. And then on the bottom, it doesn't actually really matter what's on the bottom because it's just going to be a real number. And we're only interested in the argument 7 squared. And then let's simplify that so we get 29 plus 29i over whatever. Uh, 9 plus 49 is 58. Uh, so that's actually twice 29, so that's going to make half plus half i. Um, yeah, and then you can you can do that in the calculator also as well. Um, so w was 5i minus 2, and then let's divide by 3 plus 7i equals that, and then you can also just do argument, so you hit shift and the complex, and then one for argument, and that gives you 45. You can also see that that's going to be 45 because, you know, it's got the same x-coordinate as y-coordinate, so that's going to be on the angle. Um, so we would say that the argument of w on v is pi on 4, because we should answer in radians. Part e. Now, the, my first instinct with this one was to consider the angle AOC. That's going to be twice the angle at the circumference, so that's 2 times d. And then you could cut up that triangle, um, and then those two angles would be the same, so each one would be d. And then you could look at that triangle and do like sine of, of that. But then I realized um, I don't think we're allowed to just assume that drawing that line in will bisect those angles. You would have to actually show that those two triangles are congruent and then prove it that way, which is going to take a bit too long. Like it's it's kind of more complicated than a two mark question is worth. So I try to find a different way. And what you can do is look at this angle B out here. So angle ABC, I'll just call that angle B, that's going to be equal to angle D because they're both standing on um, AC. And then we can say that this angle, angle ACB, is 90 degrees because it's standing on the diameter. Or um, they usually say it is that it's in a semicircle like that. And then you can say AB is 2R, because it's a diameter. And then, just looking at that triangle, you can do sine of angle B is opposite over hypotenuse. And then, because we said angle B was angle D, you've got sine D is DR, and that's 2R. And then just multiply both sides by the 2R. And that's it. Alright, stay tuned for question 12, which will appear up there once I've uploaded it.